You can take advantage of component-based modeling by using the new scoping capabilities of Simulink function blocks. In 14b, we introduced Simulink functions, which were global in scope, which allowed you to call them from any part of the model. Now we have introduced scoping, which allows you to better encapsulate components. Without scoping, you could run into situations where the contents of two subsystems and two Simulink function blocks are identical, as in this model, but they don't appear to be because they have to have separate names, and the reason for this is that they are global. To take advantage of scoping, you can move the Simulink function into the subsystem where it is used. I can now give the Simulink function a more generic name. I will turn on tracing to visually display connections between a Simulink function block and its collar by going to the Display menu and choosing Function Connectors. With scoping, subsystems containing Simulink function blocks with identical names can be copied. You can even create library blocks from these subsystems. If you want to call a Simulink function block inside a subsystem, you can do this with a function caller block and with the correct notation. Basically, you use the subsystem name dot the function name. This dot notation is recognized at the same level as the scoping subsystem or any level below that subsystem. You can now also see how visual tracing is done between a caller and a scoped function. Simulink function blocks scoping capabilities help you with reuse, allowing you to better take advantage of component-based modeling.